Hello everyone, in the previous video we discussed about cephalization and in this video we are going to talk about body temperature in animals and classification of animals based on body temperature. First of all, the first thing that comes to our mind uh, when we talk about body temperature and classification based on body temperature are two types of animals broadly classifying. They are the homeothermic animals and the poikilothermic animals. Okay, so first of all, let's write homeothermic animals, then we will write poikilothermic. So, homeothermic animals and poikilothermic. Okay, so these are two names, right? Now, I will give you another set of names which may or may not represent the same thing and many people ask the doubt is they are they the same thing or are they different things so let me make another classification based on another two set of names that are the endothermic animals endothermic thermic animals and under poikilothermic we have the ectothermic animals ecto okay so before we uh, discuss about if they are the same thing or if they are the different thing let us get an idea first that what are uh, homeothermic and water poikilothermic animals if you are not knowing about that okay so homeothermic animals are basically the animals which are able to regulate able to maintain a constant body temperature irrespective of the temperature of the surroundings so like birds and mammals now birds and mammals are the only two classes in the whole animal kingdom which can maintain their own internal body temperature irrespective of external body temperature this is a very high this, this is a very high good very good quality and this has very many advantages which we will discuss later so then poikilothermic is the just the opposite that is not able to maintain the constant in constant internal body temperature now let us discuss what is endothermic animals well endothermic animals are those animals which are able to produce their own heat and ectothermic is the opposite just like homeothermic and poikilothermic ectothermic animals are those animals which cannot produce their own heat and therefore if they need heat or if they need heat to survive they get it from the outside environment all right so are they the same things what do you say first let us think about the means of getting heat okay or the means of generating heat from the from our own body so endothermic animals generate heat by the following methods First of all, they can increase their metabolism. Okay, so increasing their metabolism means more reactions, whatever the reactions, respiration, more respiration and more of any reaction taking place. Metabolism is the total sum of catabolism and anabolism in a body. So all the reactions are increased. So that's one process. So let us write it. First of all, we have increasing metabolism okay what is another t another way to Im increase the body temperature we can increase the body temperature by shivering yes we have studied about that if what what happens when we shiver when we feel cold we shiver and when we sh when we shiver the ATP energy uh, ATP is burned into the muscles and that produces heat and therefore the body remains warm so another way is shivering shivering sorry then another way is this is a cellular way of producing energy that is by by I mean this how the cells produce heat there's a specific protein on the surface on the surface of the mitochondria known as thermogenin when uh, if you have studied respiration you will know that there is a hydrogen ion gradient which is generated across the across the membrane of the mitochondria lumen of the mitochondria and when the hydrogen ion pass 
some hydrogen ions pass through the ATP synthase to uh, to generate some ATP, which is a uh, letter used as the energy currency for the cell. And some of the hydrogen ions pass through a, a special protein called thermogenin. And this protein actually uses this concentration to generate heat. And that heat is actually also responsible for maintaining the constant body temperature. So third is through uh, respiration I can say respiration okay and the last one last but not the least we have through vasodilation and vasoconstriction what are these vasodilation is the dilation means the increase in the diameter of our peripheral arteries and vasoconstriction is the constriction or the decrease in diameter of the peripheral arteries. So what happens if we increase the diameter of the peripheral arteries? Well, the heat in the body is mainly present in the in blood because water is very has a very high heat capacity. So most of the heat is stored in blood. Blood is mostly water, right? So most of the heat is stored in blood and when the blood flows through the peripheral arteries, peripheral arteries or veins, okay, what happens is that since they are on the outside, they are peripheral, so blood, uh, so heat can escape very easily through those arteries when they are dilated. When they are dilated, more of the blood is flowing through the arteries, and if more of the blood is flowing, the more of the heat can escape through it, through the to the surroundings. So that's a way of losing heat from the body. A way of gaining heat is vasoconstriction. What happens when we vasoconstrict is that first of all we don't lose heat because the blood flowing through the peripheral arteries has gone down drastically so we are not losing heat and except that also the blood whatever little blood is flowing through that constricted arteries is generating heat by friction so therefore we are getting, gaining heat through vas vasoconstriction so the fourth one is vasoconstriction vasoconstriction so these are some ways through which endothermic animals can generate their own body heat and these type, these ways are not present in ectothermic animals well now let us think that if en endothermic animals and homeothermic animals are same well yeah they are the same the animals are the same but the terms are not the same endothermy results in homeothermy so this is the cause and this is the result same is for this one also so ectothermy results in poikilotherm. So ectothermic animal cannot maintain their, cannot produce their own heat. They, these animals gain heat or lose heat to the surroundings according to the surroundings and therefore they are poikilothermic animals. So the animals, we can, for a particular animal, we can call it ectothermic animal or as well as poikilothermic animal. But when we are talking about the terms, one is the cause and one is the effect. Anyways, that was the classification based on body temperature. Another thing, another classification we will do in this video only that is based on sex. Before going to that classification, let me mention another point over here, which is the advantages of having a, a fixed internal body temperature. That is that our enzymes have a optimum, optimum temperature for their working. If the temperature goes too high, then they can be denatured and if the temperature goes too low their activity also reduces and therefore in case of the poikilothermic animals they can be active or can can is they are found to be living in in the optimum conditions of seasons optimal weather conditions when it is too cold we find that some animals like some bears go to summer sleep uh, sorry winter sleep that is hibernation and in summer seasons when it is too hot and the body is getting too warm then again the organism cannot survive because it cannot regulate its own internal temperature and therefore it goes to summer sleep that is aestivation another thing is and therefore it is a very evolved character evolved trait to maintain the fixed internal body temperature and therefore that is present in only two classes within one phylum that is the phylum avis birds and the phylum mammals mammalia mammals okay another advantage of having a constant internal body temperature is that most of the times the internal body temperature which is maintained by these animals are higher than the external 
uh, external body temperature un unless it is too hot outside but most of the times the internal body temperature is higher than the external body temperature which and this results in which this resists fungal growth in the body most of the fungi cannot survive in the internal body temperature that the homeothermic animals have and therefore uh, if we compare the fungal attacks on poikilothermic animal to that of homeothermic animals we will find that it is very 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 less okay so most of the fungal fungal inf ad, uh, fungus does not able to are not able to survive in these homeothermic animals so now let us talk about the classification based on sex now in this classification also we have a lot of terms which are often confused with so again two broad categories okay so first one is there are a lot of terms for this let's write them all over here so first one we can write it as unisexual unisexual then we have dioecious or we have heterothallic so and here we have bisexual okay or we have monaceous monaceous Mon or we have homothallic sorry homothallic or we have over here another term that is the hermaphrodite okay so first of all let me clear, make it clear that only unisexual this term is used for animals and sometimes dioecious but not no dioecious is not used for animals only use unisexual and for animals unisexual and bisexual are used and hermaphrodite word is used and these are used for plants and actually for plants all these are used okay so since we are talking about animals here i will not be more specific about in uh, these differences between these three okay in some other video we will discuss about the differences anyways you will understand you may you, you still should know that what unisexual means you should already know what unisexual means till now that is unisexual means that the sexes are separate there is a, a distinct male organism and there is a distinct female organism and bisexual on the other hand means that the sexes are not separate in one organism only we have the male and female parts okay so that was about sex and that completes the classification of classification of animals so we completed all the categories of classification of animals and in the next video we will start about uh, start learning about the phylum so we will start with phylum porifera so see you in the next video bye